and uh, welcome to the CSEC. This is a we call it professional skill enhancement seminar. This is our number four, and we had three of them already, and I couldn't remember all of them. But let me try that. One, the presentation, presentation skill, and the other one I had was a small talk, and the third one was uh, how do you uh, deal with the uh, the conflict, right? And the, so this one is to do what? Business? Adequate. See, I just test the audience here, make sure they understand what we do. <laughs> <laughs> so make sure you come to the right seminar. So this is a uh, CSAC. Last year we had a convention, and the convention first speaker was Mr. Harry Lee. He introduced the, the bamboo ceiling. What does bamboo ceiling really mean? The, the Asian, you heard that glass ceiling, right? You all heard the glass ceiling. So glass ceiling is for the minority, for ladies, and uh, they have problem to advance their career for some reason, and uh, just because of culture, because of people's perception. But for the Asian, sometimes it's more, even more challenging. The part of the challenge is uh, the glass ceiling, people can see you there. You work hard. I can see it, but too bad we're not going to help you to promote that. But for Bebo Shilin, they cannot even see us. Why well, is us? Because I'm sure, of course, they cannot see me. <laughs> but mainly is the people cannot, they, they don't see the Asian deal. Right? They should work very, very hard. So that, that's one reason they call bamboo. Another reason we call bamboo because bamboo is growing up in the, in the Far East and the longer area they have a bamboo. That's what we call bamboo so, But basically it's the same thing. So we thought that the area is, uh, Harry Lee did a really good job to tell us, say, you don't have to change your culture. You still can be advanced in your career in the United States. So that's the first message we had. And uh, we extend his message saying, yes, we are minority. Yes, we are Asian. And uh, yes, we can crack the boosting. But in order to do that, you need some tools to go with you. And uh, this is six series of seminars provide a essential tools that will allow you to take with you every day. Once every day, you sleep with it, you talk with that, you face with that, and everything you need in the office, that will allow you to. So we feel that uh, I'm so grateful for so many people here, and I'm very happy with that. So with, with that said, I tell you that the purpose of this one, and then we have three more, including this one here. I want to see everybody at the end. I think that's very, to me, that's important as well. So let me introduce several people here, important people here. First, I will introduce Judy. Judy. Help me to find the speakers, organize this uh, seminar, and uh, we have many, many chat. And uh, with Judy, we have like every, almost like twice a week, okay, and even during the holidays. So, and uh, so there's another uh, helper here, uh, Justin. Justin will control the internet. And uh, so if you're a friend on the internet, uh, and uh, she usually just shut it up. So it's going to pop, she can mute them very well. She control the internet. Let's see what else. The cameraman here, that would be nice. Chris. And the brother, Tim. Tim here, they will help us record it. So train it nicely, because they will record whatever you say. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And uh, there's many helpers here in registration. Cynthia, so if you haven't done the registration, we'd like to have your name, and at least we can follow up with that. Okay. And uh, with that said, we have a, a very good, uh, we have the honor of uh, guest here, our mayor, uh, Sam uh, Kong here. But I would let Judy in this year's now, and all the speakers. It's okay. I just heard there's free food here, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to hand this one to you. Okay. We only have one microphone, so you can see a weird thing, so we just have some long here. Thank you. Thank you. We're supposed to shake hands, right? We're Oh. <laughs> <laughs> very good, very good. How many of you have been here for more than one seminar? I think you've been at everyone, haven't you? <laughs> two, two, three. Great. Four. <laughs> Your hands should all be raised. <laughs> this is the fourth one in our series. I'd like to welcome all of you. It's so great to have you here with us. And I want to remind you, if you haven't gotten an evaluation sheet, be sure and get one. And be sure and fill it out, because that's the only way that we can make our seminars better, is getting your feedback, what you like, and maybe what you thought could maybe done a little bit better. 
Secondly, you were asked to sign a referral, or not a referral sheet, look at my notes here, a release sheet. Now, somebody tell me what that's for. Yeah. Who knows? You all signed it, you better have read it. <laughs> <laughs> what it is is simply saying that you may be videotaped or audiotaped, and that some of those may be posted on a Toastmaster site or may be used in another PR campaign for the last two sessions. So that's what you were signing away, so we just want you to know that ahead of time. And it is my pleasure now to introduce our speakers. And first, I would like to introduce to you Honorable Mayor of the City of Duarte, Sam or Samuel Kane. Now, Mayor Kane was first elected to the Duarte City Council in 2013. As both the newest member of the City Council and the first Chinese American to serve as the mayor, he formerly was an IT manager. And I found out he had some other traits, which I think Deb will get into when she comes up. <laughs> but in addition to his duties on the council, Mayor King also serves as the official council representative to the Duarte Community Service Council. And also the Foothill Employment and the Training Consortium for the San Gabriel Valley Economic Partnership. And he's a member of the League of California City Asian Pacific Islanders Caucus. And that's only part of what he does. And before I introduce Deb, I do want to say that Mayor King has to leave today a little bit early. So he'll leave about 4, but about 10 to 4, we'll kind of interrupt whatever's going on. So that if you have a question, especially for Mayor King, that you can answer that before he has to leave. And he's been invited to uh, meet with uh, Mayor Gil Garcetti, and that's why he has to leave. So we appreciate so much his taking time out of his busy schedule to be with us. And now I'd like to introduce Deb Ringler. She's an international speaker inspirational. She's a writer and a master gardener. Deb started her career in horticultural at 17 years of age while working at a retail plant in Newport Beach, which serves, and she served a very affluent clientele. Though she had little horticultural experience at the time, her work ethic and her enthusiasm soon got her promoted to being the buyer of the interior plants for the entire nursery. By the age of 20, she had, encouraged by her boss, started her own interior landscape. She's been doing that business now three decades later. She served hundreds of customers in the last 35 years, and she has a lot of experience interacting with a very wealthy clientele. Now, Deb has also been host to a number of foreign exchange students in her home, and it's given her a perspective on the challenges that other cultures face when they come to the United States. Well, Deb now uses her vast horticultural business and her knowledge in combination with her variety of personal life experiences to inspire others. Deb will present in a practical and humorous way in an engaging manner regardless of her background or of your background either. So first of all, Deb will come up and get us started and then she will introduce Mayor King. So please welcome both of them. So how many of you have found that you've had some challenges with the American culture? I think even us Americans in the room. So not only have you found challenges, but how many of you came today in hopes that you're going to learn something that's going to help you know how to engage better and be more successful in your business? Great. Well, before we start how to be a star in business, let's give Dan Kai just a rounding applause for all of you. And also, they put a lot of time and effort into having this series, and I found it to be um, extremely, uh, very detailed. And Dan Kai's done a lot to make sure all the details are uh, taken care of, and I really appreciate that, Dan Kai. Thank you. Thank you. Would it be okay with you if, before we start the presentation, if Sam and I just take a real quick moment and share a little bit about our stories and how we feel like we have the ability to share with you business etiquette? Yes. Okay. Sam. Oh. <laughs> I'm not seeing where the mic is. Oh, oh Judy, because I have it. Get one while you're talking, Judy. <laughs> Okay, hello everybody. Um, my name is Sam. 
Um, if I do a good job, yes, my name is Sam. But if I don't do a good job, my name is Tom. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> How's that? Is that going to work? Yes. Perfect. All right. So let me tell you a little bit about myself. Um, you know, I, uh, I think like um, Dankai and, and Judy said, you know, I am the newly elected, um, appointed actually, mayor of City of Duarte. Uh City of Duarte is called City of Health. We have City of Hope over at our you know, neighborhood. So um, we. What I like to do is I like to go ahead and help them to grow, especially helping with all the Chinese patients um, coming over to the United States. And I would like them to go ahead and stay in the city of Hope to go ahead and help them out, um, especially if there's a huge epidemic in, in, in China. So that's what I like to go ahead and do at my fun time. Um, how I got it started is because I was just so fed up one day with the city. Um, and and I started and I started running and um, it just so happened I luckily got elected. Um, how did I do that? It's because my family's been in politics for a long time. Um, uncle, uh, his name is Paul Z. He used to be the, uh, the the mayor and council member for South Pasadena for 12 years. So I learned a lot from him. And because of that and knowing that knowledge and able to go and acquire that knowledge. How do you really go ahead and influence people? I was able to go ahead and use that knowledge and that tool set to go and help myself, to propel myself. And it just so happened, you know, I ran a pretty good campaign. It was about uh, uh, three seats with eight people, nine people. Um, it was a pretty brutal fight, but, you know, I stayed out of all these negative campaigns and so on. And I was able to go ahead and get elected. So after that, uh, how did I become, you know, the mayor is a lot of influencing, which we will, Deb and I will want to go ahead and talk to you about is how do you go ahead and talk to people? How do you go ahead and find out what is their objective? Your main goal is to go ahead and help that person to be better. That will in turn help you to be better. Um, that's what, you know, key of success, yeah, one part of it uh, to, be, to be successful. So. You know, th those are the stuff that we want to go ahead and talk to you about. But before I became the mayor, you know, I was, like um, Deb said, I was the healthcare IT manager. I did a lot of, uh, um, I did a lot of data centers. I decommissioned a lot of data centers. I used to work for United Healthcare. So um, I had to deal with uh, a whole bunch of people. Um, so the Fortune 10 environment I'm very, very familiar with. How do we go ahead and again the word influence each other? How do we lobby each other? How do we go ahead and use um, the correct words for your immediate manager or maybe your VP? And how do you go ahead and work with the people who are under you? So there's a lot of stuff that we need to go ahead and uh, utilize and understand the situation. And the key word of, uh, uh, of is actually situational awareness. As long as you know where you stand. Where you're at, are you are you on a board level? Are you on a manager's level, and so on? Those are stuff that you know we want to go ahead and talk to you guys about. But anyways, I'll just go ahead and shut up now. So um, I guess we can go ahead and continue on. So and, and, and talk more about this. So, yeah. so a little bit about me. When I was 20, I started my own company, and I'm really a plant person. I love plants. Always have. But I don't, I hear I'm a young, young girl, I have no business experience, I really don't have a lot of work experience, and I don't have a college degree, and now I've started a business where I'm dealing with very affluent, wealthy people in Newport Beach. So I kind of learned by trial and error, and 35 years later, I hope that Sam and I can share you uh, some experience from our mistakes, because I believe you make, you learn more from your mistakes than you do from your successes. So don't you find it a challenge? Obviously, you're in a different country with different cultures, and now you're trying to integrate yourself in to do well in not only your business situations, but your social situations. Is that kind of a problem you feel like you're facing? Well, I believe that regardless of what country you're in or what community you're in, that courtesy and respect will really bridge a lot of gaps wherever you are. 
So that's what we're going to teach you today through our star of what you, what you can do to stand out and as Sam was saying, influence people. And that's what you want to do. You want to be a positive influence and you want to stand out as a star in your community and in your, your business. And that's where we're going to go with you today. So STAR stands for salutations, which is greetings. And how you not only greet and meet someone, but also how you introduce other people to each other when you're networking. And how you can create connections with people. Time. In America, time is really important. And, and we're going to talk about the value of that. Also, what it means to be attentive. What it means to be courteous and aware of your environments. What you were saying, situationally aware. You don't want to come in and, and take over. You want to be aware of already what's happening and then respect. Which, frankly, I really have to commend your culture. I think you are an extremely respectful culture. All of the students of mine that have stayed from Asian um, countries have been very respectful of me as their host mother, and I really appreciated that. So, make it a first impression. You want to start way when you're in your car or when you're at home. Why is it important to make a great first impression? Now, what, what would Sam and I have projected toward you if we showed up in jeans and t-shirts? And we're teaching you about business etiquette. Would that have given us credibility to you? Probably not. So the reason why your first impression with someone is really important is it will get you admired by your superior. Make it look good. That's very important. It'll help you get a job promotion and you'll be trusted by a superior because they know that you'll bring honor to them and that you'll be able to represent them in a way that they will appreciate. And your benefits is you'll have higher self-esteem, you'll have higher self-confidence. It'll be easier for you to socialize because you feel like you're presenting yourself correctly. And you have a positive appearance. So all of those are very important toward making an impression when you're first meeting somebody. So here you are, you're at home, and you're getting ready, and you're preparing. No, it's, it's there. It's there. So you're getting ready to prepare yourself. The first thing you need to do is examine your attitude. Do you think people can tell when you walk in a room if you're having a bad day? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So your attitude, I'm sure, Sam, you have a lot about this. How, how do you handle going into one of your board meetings and you are having a bad day? Don't you have to somehow compartmentalize that in order to how you're going to run that meeting as a leader? You, you have to. So if, in any situation, even if you're at the board level, or if you're, you know, doing a one-on-one -on -one with your manager, it's better to go ahead and be objective. Meaning, you don't want to go ahead and show, oh, I had a bad day. I fought with whoever, or my, you know, just, just, just don't break the negative negativities inside. You want to go ahead and be objective. You always want to go ahead and be positive. Because what if that person's having a negative day, right? A bad day, and you have a, neg a negative day, a bad day, guess what? It's going to go to turn into, it could turn into something that's very, very negative. Um, so for me, in a board meeting, I would be very, very cordial. I will have to be very um, diplomatic in a way. You know, you, you have to be political at that time when you get to that level. You objective unless you're able to go ahead and break the ice with your boss now sometimes my previous bosses I was not able to go ahead and break the ice because that person finds himself or herself to be over the top or if you're able to go ahead and start talking to your manager on one-on-one -on -one basis able to go ahead and break the ice then perhaps you can go ahead and bring some of that stuff in but nonetheless stay out of it if you want to go ahead and be objective how you like what Deb said how you can go ahead and bring yourself and the company and of course your manager up into the next level. That's what you want to do. So it's a choice you're making. Get your mind in the game. Make a choice as to what are you going to bring into that room. 
and, and what Sam is saying, don't bring the negativity in. Bring positive, stand, be confident. It may be 30 minutes, it may be a couple hours, whatever you put on on the outside, you'll deal with it when you get back. Yep. Number two, you've got to analyze your attire. Your clothes do say a lot about you, whether you want to agree to it or not. If I came in here in my gardening attire, which is what I wear when I run my business, would that have reflected that I'm not a professional to you? So it's very important that you take the time to find out who you're going to visit or who you're going to network with and find out how they dress. You want to always be at their level or even slightly a little above so that they know that you take very seriously how they're presenting themselves. Absolutely. Do, do we all understand this? Yeah. Okay, so we don't have to talk more, right? Because before, when I was like in the teens, well, I'm actually 25, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, I'm 42, but, but, um, but you know, in the, in the teens, I used to be like, I'll dress whatever I want. I don't care. I don't respect. You know, that's another word. It's because I don't really care. It's just, that's who I am. But now, you, you can't do that because even for me, I have so many business people go and talk to me. My first impression of that person is so important. If that person cannot go and communicate, be objective, and don't dress well, guess what? I'm going to go ahead and put that person aside. I'm going to go ahead and talk to that person that is objective, that dresses well, and perhaps you know has a really good objective and how we can go ahead and mutually help each other. And that's something that's very important. <coughs> yes. And then you're, go ahead. Yes. I, I don't know how you guys want to do this. Um, well, we're going to have a question and answer right after oh. each session. So would it be okay if you just yes. hold it? Okay. And another thing, apart your, your looks is your grooming and how important it is to make sure that you you are clean in your hairstyle and your makeup and your cleanliness. You want, if you're especially if you're going to be in a business situation, and let's say you're going to possibly meet your future boss, then you want to know, they want to know how are you going to project yourself as far as uh, an employee of my company. Just like with Sam, he's standing here and he has to represent the city of Duarte. That's important. And even though it's a it's a, it's a servanthood. He's a servant of a city, but he still has to represent that in the way that other people will look up to him. And then not only by how you look, but we're going to talk about once you make your impression and you meet someone, then your reputation is what follows by how you act and what you do and if you follow through on the things that you say. So, and then you want to evaluate your nonverbal communication. Now you know what that means. That means what are you saying to that person when you're not speaking? Now if Sam was up here talking and I'm over here on my phone with my back to him, am I giving him respect showing that I'm actually listening to what he's saying? No. So you want to show respect and you want to show that person that you're engaged and we're going to show that in our activity of how you can do that just with nonverbal communication because frankly sometimes that speaks louder than the words that you're saying. Absolutely. You know, she's so right about this. This is not even funny, right? There's actually a degree that you can go ahead and learn on about body language. And for me, I, I find it to be successful is to how to read that person. That person can tell you one thing, yes, 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 but the person kept on going like this, right? So reading people is the key. If you're an attorney, right, you read a person when you cross-examine that cross-examining that person is the body language. And if you're able to go ahead and see the weakness of that person, you continue on to go ahead and get to the truth, to the cause of it. And the key to success in any kind of communications is, I think, is, is reading the body language. 70% of your, how you communicate, it's actually through the non-verbal. What I'm telling you and what I'm showing you, it's totally different. If they're different, then you gotta go ahead and dig deeper. But if they're telling you the same thing, then you can go ahead and continue and move on. It's an art. You've got to go ahead and continue to learn it. There's a lot of books and body languages and so on. You know, just read that stuff. It's actually really good. Yeah, like temperament styles and how people communicate and what they do. You can learn a, a tremendous amount. I'm a, I'm a mom of a, of a son, and I taught him temperaments when he was very young, and he said that is by far one of the most valuable tools I've ever given him. And he goes, it's helped me in my jobs, it's helped me in school, it's helped me interact with people. So it's really important to take the time. If you're wanting to be a good communicator, it's important to know that. So we're going to show you how to do a proper greeting. Who would like to come up here and volunteer 
uh, with Sam, and uh, we're going to show you how to make a proper greeting. Please, come on up. <laughs> Demonstrate or show you to Sam how we're going to do this. You're going to be you're going to be my other demonstrator, okay? So when you come up, you want to stand tall, and you want to you want to be a, you know uh, have good posture, and you want to be confident, and you're going to show that by how you're how you're presenting yourself. You want to smile, don't you think, Sam? He's very engaging. He's not intimidating because he has a wonderful smile. So you want to smile. You want to make eye contact with the person when you're going up to them. If you go up and shake their hand and you're looking down, you're not making um, connection with them. Then you shake hands, you raise your eyebrows, and you kind of lean in slightly. You want to model that? And, and, and the whole reason why Deb is saying that is because I am continuously sizing up that person. Don't, don't leave. Don't leave. Come back. <laughs> Yeah, see, I mean, if you do that, it's a weakness for me. Oh, yeah. for me. <laughs> I'm serious, right? So it's like, how do you make yourself to be sharp? How do you make yourself to be to be good, right? To be something that you have the aura that people want you to come over towards you is, I am continuously engaged in surveying people. So I know if you are being weak to me, then and this is all the art of gestures now. So if you're continuing to, to be weak to me, I don't know if I'm significant. Uh, my priority might go down a lot more, but if you come up, you know, shove my hand like this, hi, how you doing? My name is Sam. Okay, like that, right? Then with that said, I am, you, I, I'm, 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 you're catching my attention. And another key thing to go ahead and be successful and get a person's attention, let's say I have a whole bunch of them, you guys coming over and talking to me. And then, and then Deb go like this. And then she shook my hand, grabbed it really, really hard, and then she went like this. She grabbed onto me. Now I have attention. You see that? You see that connectivity? Even if I'm going I'm like this. I'm not shaking him now. See? <laughs> <laughs> if I'm going like this, I'm like, I'm going back to you. You're controlling me. Yeah. You see that art right there? Mm -hmm. There's a lot of gestures that you want to go ahead and utilize. So again, you want to go ahead and shake my hand. Come up. Come up. Oh, okay. so, uh, no. Uh, With confidence, come over. Okay. Hi, nice to meet you. Yes, okay, okay. good. Sorry. And your so name I is? No, no, you <laughs> never ever do that. Never. If you go ahead and do that, okay. that tells you you're aggressive. <laughs> I'm serious. No. Guys, these are all art, right? So I, it's my indication who you are. That if you're aggressive, I need to go ahead and see, okay, I gotta watch out who you are. <laughs> right? So, I mean, it really depends on what temperament, like Deb is saying, who you are. You gotta go ahead and find out who you are. Because I'm a friendly person, whenever I do it, I go like this, right? Some people go like this, some people go like this, right? They do, and when they go like that, I'm like, okay, all right, I gotta go ahead and size this guy up a little bit more and understand who this person really is. If this person is a weak person, okay, out the door, he's out of here, but she's out of here, right? That's what I would do, but, but you know, that's what you want to go ahead and see who your, your manager is and so on. If your manager goes like this, you better watch out. Yeah. Right? So that's the stuff that you need to learn. Body language is 70% of non communications that you need to understand. Okay. So try again. Try with me. Come up to me and. Nice to meet you. And your name is? Great. Nice to meet you. So you lean in, you look them in the eye, you get their name. Okay? And that's what we're going to initially do as a greeting. But after that, we're going to break into a group, but there's two things I'm going to have you do. So we're going to demonstrate the next one is. So we've, we've greeted each other, stay up here, we've greeted each other, but now I would like her to meet Sam. So I'm, I'm the one that's going to introduce Jennifer and Sam. So I want you to show you that there is protocol in how you do this. Traditionally, in a business setting, you will always introduce the person that has the highest power or hierarchy between the two people. You will introduce that person of higher importance first to the other person. So let's say if Judy was going to introduce Sam and I, Sam would go first. Not that Sam thinks he's authority, but by, by protocol within society, Sam has a higher authority than I do. So in this situation, Sam has a higher authority <laughs> than Jennifer just because of the nature of how he's serving the community. So come over here, Jennifer. So Sam, 
Yes. I would really like you to meet Jennifer. Sure. She's attended this. Hi, I don't know how, how many are you? Times, Hi, times. It's nice to meet you. And Jennifer you Sam is the mayor that? of Duarte. Uh -huh. And okay. so you, you have to have comp. No, no, no. I want you to. Oh. Okay. <laughs> See that? I want you to do that. Oh, oh, oh. Right? Okay. But it's because, like, let's go back a little bit. Where's the power at? Is it me or is it her? I, I'm not saying that I am, right? I, I, I'm just telling you how it works in, in, your, in your, your, your VP talking to your manager, your director, or your director is talking to you. I don't know what, what level you guys are in. So it really depends on if I am open to you guys or not. Some managers will go, do it again? I'll go like this. Okay. Right? If I do that to you, I am overtaking you, right? That, 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 that actually tells me there's insecurity of that person then I need to go ahead and find out who that person is. Why is that person doing that to me? Or maybe he, this person was brought up to be like this. I don't know, <laughs> who knows, right? So there's a lot of stuff that I need to go ahead and psychoanalyze that person to go ahead and see how I need to go ahead and deal with that person. Make sense? So I'm introducing Jennifer to Sam. Okay, so you take the person that has lesser authority and you introduce them to the person with higher authority. If it is a political figure, like Sam is, and you're introducing them to someone that could either record them or interview them, then you would, if I was, let's say, I worked for the Los Angeles Times, then that person would introduce me as a reporter for the Los Angeles Times. So someone in political power would know that they could be recorded. That's important. Yes. Okay, yes. very important. Very and we did important. ask Sam before we recorded this how he wanted us to, to, to refer to him, whether we wanted it to be Mayor Kane or Sam, and, or, and so he gave us permission to speak to him with his first name, but we did ask him. <laughs> Quite honest, I'm just Sam, right? Yeah. I'm, 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 just same, I'm the same person as like you guys. I'm no better than you guys. It just so happened that I'm elected. All of you guys can do the same thing, I kid you not. You just need to go ahead and be empowered and capable and just be persistent, you'll get there. And gender plays no role in America, okay? The women can be in as much positions of power yes. as men can. Yes. So it's not gender and you don't hug females in a, in a business setting. <laughs> um, traditionally, if you know them socially, then you can, but when you're first introducing to someone, it's still best to handshake. And they just worry about women shaking hands. Uh, but normally the person that's being introduced should extend their hand to the other person, okay? And then, this is interesting, when you're introducing a client, so you have a client or someone that you're bringing in your company and you want them to meet your boss, believe it or not, that trumps it. The client gets the honor to the boss. So Jennifer, come up here. So if you're, you're the client and I'm introducing you to Sam, then I would say, Sam, I would really like you to meet Jennifer. She's one of our newest customers, and I just, Hi, how uh, are with you? you being the CEO Wonderful of the company, I just wanted to introduce you. Thank you so much for joining my company. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, serious, right? Then I'm going to say, if there's anything I can go ahead and do to help you be better, please let me know. I'm open, I'm connected, I'm telling her the same thing. Everything is positive. So I want her to go ahead, it's about sales now, right? So how do we go ahead and get that person's trust? First impression is so important. Two minutes, that's it. Yeah. If, if I don't have that, you're gone. You literally have no more than two minutes that's it. to make a first impression on somebody. Now you can, if you've made a mistake or don't feel you've made a, a great impression initially, and let fired, you have a lot of other things you can do to build a reputation. Because a lot of people can make a great first impression, but then they never follow through on yes. what they say. So you still have opportunity to still impact that person. But I want you to really, it's, it's, it's a, uh, almost a visualization you get into when you walk into a meeting, how do you want people to see you? Yep. And it's really important in America that, that you understand that. So this goes down into saying when you introduce a non-official person, like I said, to an elected official, then you would, you would introduce them to the elected official and let them know what what their position is. So that if they're gonna be recorded or whatever, that that elected official knows that. So Senator Watson, I would say Sam, allow me to introduce Jennifer 
and she is a reporter for the Los Angeles Times. That's the order that you would do that. Is that how they normally do it for you, Sam? Sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes. Most of the time, but yes. And then if you're introduced, we did the client to a customer. So you want to introduce the customer. This is the big Oh, I'm sorry. Um, then you, if you the customer, then you would say um, uh, the firm to a client or a customer, Mr. Dawson, this is Mrs. Sanders, the chief financial. So that would be Jennifer. Jennifer, this is Sam. He's our chief financial officer. Sam, this is Mrs. Mrs. Dawson. They're our new client. So we've demonstrated that. And then the last one is to introduce a junior executor, so someone that's still within power of the company, to another senior executor, maybe of another company. Dan Cotton. I was a little bit confused. Uh, I thought that in general, you met a lady in the room, right? Okay. And you should have treated her a little bit more, I would say, respect than the man. Well, that's how I thought I was talking. You're just being a wonderful gentleman. <laughs> <laughs> but I think what we were just saying is that as far as authority goes, if in America, it's not gender related. It can be a woman or a man that's a CEO or a CFO, but it is still good to be a gentleman and have manners. Yes. My personal belief yes. is, I've always told my son, if you want your girlfriend to act like a queen, treat her like one. <laughs> so if you want women to treat you that way, treat them like that. They will normally really respond to that. Do you agree? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever women want. <laughs> so this is what we're going to do. Yes, go ahead. Time for a question. Sorry, I was a little confused about the second one. When you introduced, so when Jennifer was a client, I thought you, you introduced her to the other I may have done it. Let's look at Mr. Dawson. This is Mrs. Sanders. So I did. This is Mr. Dawson is Jennifer. Yes. Mr. Dawson is Jennifer. That's the client. Right. Mr. Dawson's the client. Okay. So Mr. Dawson is Jennifer. Jennifer, this is Sam. So you would introduce your boss. Let's say this is let's just say this is your boss. And right. you would introduce the boss to the client first. No, you would right. introduce the client to the boss. Mr. Dawson is the client. So Mr. Dawson, this is Sam, the CEO. Sam, this is Mr. Dawson, our newest customer. Does that make sense? It's a little confusing. I'm going to leave this up here when we do the activity. Okay? So what we're going to do is you're going to get in groups of three. Um, can I ask a question? Yes. Um, there's lots of little things that we have to remember. So we're going to make mistakes, right? Absolutely. So can you give a good example? But you realize you made a mistake, right? Chinese are also embarrassed. I'm not a mistake. How do we get out of a mistake gracefully? Sam, I'm going to let you do that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so so I do deal with, I do deal with a lot of um, Chinese entrepreneurs. Um, uh, it's just because of the foreign relationships that I, I built, right? I'm not quite sure what kind of mistakes are you talking about, like a gesture of mistakes or something when someone's talking. You or said just something mistake, wrong. just a mistake in like, general. Like you, you said I'm um, introducing you to this, and I said, oh my god, it's a wrong secret. So you what? Know. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. But it's not okay if we're Chinese. We have to be nervous. <laughs> 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 well, I tell you this: in life. There's yes. nothing imperfect. I make mistakes all the time, too. That's the purpose of my question. It's okay to make a mistake if you know how to get on of the Just make a joke about it. Just give some examples. Oh, okay. So, some people will make jokes. Some people will, you know, but I'm pretty, I'm pretty compassionate. So, if I know that person is making a mistake already, it's okay. I won't even correct that person. I know it already. So, just move on. It's okay. It's not a big deal. But if you know you make Okay, so this is this is two totally two different things. I know you've got two minutes. In Asian culture, you want to go ahead and admit it. In the American culture, you just go ahead and bury it. <laughs> and move on. You move on. I'm sorry. Okay, this is America. So you want to go ahead and move on with it. You feel Japanese, you'll kill yourself. <laughs> Where's my knife? <laughs> Uh, 
and then you want to introduce your spouse to your boss, your right. coworkers. What's the difference there? I would probably see the the boss for sure as the senior, and your spouse as the secondary. So I would do it in in, in this sequence. Just or think about this. Executive. You are here to lead who to see who, right? So you want to go ahead and introduce the person that your person that you have associated closely associated with to talk to that person. You want to go ahead and grab that person's attention first and then introduce that person. It makes no sense to go ahead and say, hey man, I'm over here, and that person is still talking to someone else. So you want to grab that person's attention first, then quickly make that bridge. That's the key. Okay? I have a comment. In Chinese culture, you always respect the elders. So sometimes, you know, if they're equal, you will know, respect the elders, but you just respect, okay? You know, this guy's you know, much older. So, so again, we're, we're, I understand the Asian culture part of it. We're trying to go ahead and make you be more assimilated into American culture. And not saying that there is respect or disrespect. I'm just saying that um, what, what Deb is saying is how do we go ahead and communicate? Like to say, if you're looking for information from, Deb is introducing, right, uh, 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 us together, mm -hmm. and you're looking for information from me, mm -hmm. then she's going to go ahead and say, hey, I would like to go ahead and introduce Sam to you. Mm -hmm. And and that's how it is. And I see it all the time. I, I mean, I'm right? I, I do have a lot of other elected officials who are much older than I am, mm -hmm. and I highly respect these people, but sometimes, you know, I go ahead and talk to these people first, or vice versa, and so on. It really depends on the situation and, and of course if it is just Asian in between yeah. Asian then I'll go ahead and switch it up. Yeah. So there's nothing solid. If it is Asian to Asian you're in China, okay then right. you switch it up to over to that yeah. that that kind of talking, right? Yeah. So if you're in America and there is a power difference, then you want to go ahead and switch right. it up to that. So yeah. you gotta always be thinking. You gotta have that situation of awareness again. You gotta think. Yes. And the main thing is just trying to make people feel comfortable. Yes. Be the bridge that yes. helps people connect. That's the most important thing. And if you make a mistake, they're going to understand whether you're being authentic or whether you're being manipulative. There's a difference. And you know that. Don't you know that in people? And if they just make an innocent mistake, you smile and you move on. It's okay. That's the way, Joe. I met a, a Korean guy. He said, friends, two Koreans get together. They put our questions. How old are you? There's a reason behind. Because you're older than me, I respect you. I was in the bar, I said, you're polite. I'm saying, you're not saying. You're in Korea, it's perfect. How old are you? If you're 60, I'm 40. I highly respect you. I'm 25. So we're going to do an activity now. We're going to break into groups of only three people. Okay? And this is what I want you to do. I want you to introduce yourself the first round. What you're going to do is you're just going to practice leaning in and introducing yourself, saying your name <coughs> and who you are. Tell every person in, in the, so there's only three of you, you introduce yourself to each other, okay? And I want you to think about this. You want to smile, you want to shake, and you want to say hi with your eye, okay? You just remember those three things. That's, that's key. Then what we're going to have you do is we're going to have you introduce the other two people to what to like let's say Sam and I'm going to introduce Sam and Jennifer. You're going to take the other two people in your group and you're going to introduce them. And the reason did you all write down a fact about yourself that I had you write? So what I want you to do is say their name and then say what they wrote about themselves so the other person already has an immediate point of contact of who they are. And then you're just helping bridge. You're helping people connect. Helping people. How many of you feel uncomfortable when you go in a room like this? And you have to meet all different kinds of new people. Does that make you nervous? Seriously, none of you are raising your hand. <laughs> we, but I want you to know, we all feel that way. We all do. Everybody does. We all. So that's, that's nothing unusual. The best yes. thing you can do is go with it. Yes. And be the person that's helping people connect. I will normally search out the person that's seating the most shy in the corner and go up and talk to them. Okay? <laughs> So get into groups of three quickly. We're only going to do this for about five minutes. So quickly introducing each other. Okay, who's buying each other lunches? That's right. Am I included? I'm the youngest. Yeah.
Elias, you guys can buy me a light. <laughs> So STAR stands for salutations, or how you greet and introduce each other. Okay? It's extremely important that you do it with confidence, and that mainly the, the point is that you're connecting. You're being a connector to people. You're being a bridge to people. So it's really important in America that you value time. All of us only have 24 hours in a day. Your 24 hours isn't any more important than my 24 hours. We all only have a certain amount of time. And Americans do view being late as very rude. Yes. And showing a lack of respect and having sloppy discipline. And all three of those are something I know that your culture does not want to represent. Is that correct? So let's talk about what does being on time in a business situation mean. It generally means you're five minutes early. Now, does it mean that you come in and that you don't know where your notes are and that you're scatterbrained and all of that? No. When you come in, you be prepared. So you do all of that beforehand. I left my house at 10 o'clock this morning to be here on time and have all the things that I needed. I spent last night, early this morning. She really did. <laughs> <laughs> and She's Sam awesome. showed up early as well. I did. He was here almost 30 minutes early. So five minutes late is acceptable with an apology if you walk in the door. 10 to 15 minutes late requires a phone call and you cannot use traffic as an excuse. <laughs> We're all in the traffic. Okay, now if you've missed a plane or there's a problem, that's different, but you should be calling whoever your contact is and let them know that you're uh, arriving late and why and then you should apologize when you arrive. You need to always keep your appointments. I believe it's always good to confirm your appointments Sam and um, uh, uh, Dan, Kai, and Judy and I have been communicating all week long, making sure that we all knew what was expected and what we were going to do. And it's very important to meet deadlines. What if Sam and I just kind of blew this off and didn't determine that we needed to be here? I mean, that would have been disrespectful to you, to Dan, Kai, and to everybody that paid to be here. So it's very important. Do you have anything to add to that? She's absolutely right. You know why it is so important that you need to go ahead and have the integrity? You know, the, the main thing is about branding. You're branding yourself. If you are showing disrespectful to everyone else, then people can go ahead and, and, and see that you're not a, a genuine person. You're, 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 you don't have integrity and so on. You want to go ahead and make sure that, you know, you, whoever you want to go ahead and be, you need to go ahead and show that and convey that you know, to the people. That's what you want to go ahead and do. So I believe, you know, we need to go ahead and be on time. And that's actually my pet peeve. I, I can't stand people who's always late or last minute to start going and change. Because I have a schedule myself that I need to go ahead and go with my mind. Right? I can't just go ahead and go with your schedule and so on. If you go ahead and do that, that, that tells me that we don't want to go ahead and work together. And guess what? That relationship will end eventually. So if you want to go ahead and work with whoever that person is, you want to go ahead and make sure they're, you, you're, you're communicating together. So. And, and I, I couldn't agree more. I, I've had even friendships that I've kind of went way down low on my priority level because they weren't honoring up my time. And the way I look at it is we all only get a certain amount of time in the day. And I consider that a very precious commodity. And if someone steals my time, they might as well steal them right out of my bank account. Because it's wow. that important to me. Yes. If you think about what someone's billable hours are, yes. would you be late for a doctor? Would you be late to go to an airport because you're going to miss the plane? The way I look at it is you need to honor people's time to the same level as you would that. So we're going to take a question and answer. Yes, Dan Kai. Can we use the traffic as an excuse anymore? <laughs> well, we said no because we're all in it, unless you had a plane that was delayed. But we're all in traffic, so you really have to take into account. And we've all got MapQuest and Google, and it should tell you when you're going to get there, and I just give yourself it, it a happens. It does. It's not that people won't give you grace, but that can't be the only excuse you use all the time. You, so what other excuse we could use it? <laughs> <laughs> my dog ate my papers. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, but, but 
you just want to go ahead and continue on to go ahead and say, hey man, I'm always late. Hey, I cannot go ahead and get my deliverables done. If, if it's a continuous thing, it turns into a trend, I, that tells me who you are. Right. Right? If you continue on, continuing to go ahead and say that I'm sick, I'm sick, I'm sick, I'm sick. <laughs> well, why am I with you? You know, I don't want to go ahead and get sick. <laughs> but, but my point is, you know, if you want to go ahead and work with that person, and, and if I am giving my 110%, I expect that person to go ahead and give at least 100%, right? So does anybody have any other specific questions um, with salutations? How did that go for you and your activity? Did you feel like that was a good thing for you to practice? And it is okay to practice as speakers. For me, I practice. I practice with my roommates. I practice with my friends. It's okay to practice. And it's okay to do it with people you're comfortable with. But really take that part very seriously. And then when you go to a, a networking or a, a, a engagement like this, work toward practicing your skills. In this environment, this is perfect for you because we're all friends. And this is why Dan Kai created this, is to give you all an opportunity where you can be a little unsure of yourself, but it's okay, because everybody feels that way, okay? How many of you guys think you are an introvert? Okay, so this is, okay, that's good. I mean, I think majority of you guys think that you guys are an introvert, which is good. But for the introvert, I'm not saying this is bad or are good, you know. We all have our good, you know, uh, uh, things that we want. We, we, we can do. Um, you probably could be really, really good in calculations and analysis and so on. You know, for the extroverts, you know, temperament is you. You're here to go ahead and be the uh, go getter, go out there to go ahead and talk to people. So if you want to go ahead and be an, uh, uh, you're an introvert and you want to go ahead and convert yourself or to be more outgoing, guess what, you're going to have to put a lot more practice and just go ahead and talk to people. I know, when I just started before, you know, or even when I was young, you know, I, when I talk to people, especially a pretty girl, I'm like, you know, <laughs> or maybe I won't even go like this, I'll just go. Right? So, but that's the thing that you need to go ahead and conquer yourself, you need to go ahead and overcome that, and then to the point that it is, it is, it is second nature to you that you can just go ahead and go and talk to that person with no hesitation. And that's what you want to go ahead and make yourself to be better. And I tell you, I was an introvert. I was seriously an introvert, right? Because I, I was, you know, always into, you know, making things and, 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 and drawing, whatever, and stuff like that, and so on. But now, I just, I have converted myself to be, to be an extrovert. Because after I become a firefighter, I talk to people, I command people, I'm able to go ahead and, and understand how people are. And, and the main thing is, I'm able to go ahead and read people's body gestures. And that's the key to success. And whether you're an extrovert or an introvert, we all need to learn to be good communicators you if you're going to be successful in business. So you learn who you are and what your style is, and then you learn how to be the best you you can be. And then you learn how to project yourself. Well, yes. One more question on that. Um, if you introduce um, people from different cultures to each other, what kind of thing you keep in mind? Like, for example, if, ha if you have um, introduced a Chinese um, Chinese uh, business people to maybe the city. How do you balance the different different culture? Uh, uh, okay, that's a great question. So, if I'm in China, which yes, I I, I just came back from China, then I'll go ahead and use the Chinese etiquette, right? Their 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 culture. If I am in America, then I'll go ahead and use the American culture. It really depends. Again, you've got to go ahead and know where you're at, right? How do you go? There's that balance. You don't want to go ahead and offend people, but you've got to go ahead and show that. It goes back to what is your objective, you know? So do I want to go ahead and show my power? Do I not want to go ahead and show my power? There's a lot of stuff that you've got to go ahead and continuously go ahead and think. How, what are you, what is your objective? You want to go ahead and come over and do business with me. Okay, well. What is your objective? How do you want to go ahead and talk to me, and so on? So, if I want to go ahead and say, you know what, there are ten thousand of you guys want to go ahead and do um, roads, okay? Want to go ahead and create my roads or, or build my buildings? Then I will be less inclined to go ahead and talk to you. So, how do you go ahead and capture your my attention? You know, there's a lot of stuff that you got to go ahead and figure it out. What is your objective? Pre-think it if you can, and think how you can help them connect. 
in a, in a good way that helps everybody feel comfortable. And it's about influencing, too. If I don't know who you are and you go ahead and bring that person who wants to go and do roads, guess what? I, I'm not saying me. I'm not being arrogant whatsoever. But it's because I have so many of these people coming over that how do you go ahead and capture my attention? That's the key. And look, I'm nothing more than a little tiny city, okay? Imagine you go up to another level. You go to the assembly level. You go into the to the senator's level. You go ahead and go to, you know, uh, uh, the treasurer level, which, uh, you know, all these people are good friends of mine. Imagine them, right? So you got to go ahead and think about what is your objective, how are you going to go ahead and get there? Okay, we're going to take a five-minute break. So, we've talked about salutations. We've talked about time. Now we're going to talk about being attentive, which is a lot of what Sam was referring to as being situationally aware of your environment, of the people around you. If you're coming into um, a situation, let's say being interviewed or into a networking meeting or a board meeting, you're entering someone else's space and you need to honor that. With what I do for a living, I'm actually entering people's homes and I enter their homes. I have to be very honoring of what's happening there. Regardless of what my task or my job is, what's going on in their life is way more important than what I need to be getting done. I have arrived when someone's mother just died in the home that month. So if I come in and say, I'm sorry, I need to take care of your plants, <laughs> does that, does that be a big priority? So you have to learn to be very attentive and sensitive. So these are the attentiveness traits that you would find. They're thoughtful of other people. They're going to put other people above maybe what their agenda is. They're considerate, they're polite, and they're courteous. This should all come fairly easier for you as Asians than I think Americans, to be honest with you. Uh, that's something that your culture really honors. And so this can be a huge benefit to you in America. Sam, <laughs> you, you look like you had something to say. Uh, Tell me that. Have you had that happen? I mean, don't you want to deal with someone that's showing these traits? Yes. Um, so to be a, an artful persuader, to be a good leader, to be an effective leader, this is the key. Okay? And this is what I study by Kitchen Up. I don't have a PhD in this, but... I study this so much all the time. You guys all heard of this book called The Art of War? It's from China, right? That book is my Bible. You know why? Because I need to know what your objective is. I need to know your strong points. I need to know your weaknesses. And that's what I do whenever I go into a boardroom, whenever I go into whatever I do, if my objective is to go ahead and do whatever I need to go ahead and do, well, guess what? I size you up immediately. I need to know who you are, how I can help you and promote you. I don't ever try to you know, put people down. I don't, okay? It's how we go ahead and make it so that we all grow together. And you've got to be thoughtful of others. If you're only thinking about yourself, my objective is to go ahead and sell that car to you no matter what. Well, guess what? That person wants a gold car. You kept on selling that green car to that person. Did you guys meet? Right? You guys did not communicate, did not get that uh, um, uh, uh, brokering. You, know, you guys didn't broker a deal. You need to understand who that person is. If that person is very defensive, that, 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 that person wants a, a gold car. If, if that is the case, then you got to go ahead and figure out a way how to go ahead and sell that car to that person. Main thing is you need to know who you're dealing with. If you don't know, just blatantly go into that conference room or whatever and just go ahead and talk to that person. Most of the time, guess what? You're not going to go ahead and close that deal. So the main thing in success is really to be considerate of others, right? Being thoughtful and being being very, very polite if you if you need to and being cordial. You've got to be, be further courteous to others too. Main thing is you want to make yourself to be less superior than others. 
your main job is to get that person's influence, get that person's buy-in. If I am always superior to you, you will find me to be a threat. I want you to go ahead and look at me, or you, whenever you go into that object, uh, 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 into that into that situation, to be open, right? Come and talk to me, and that's the key to success. Okay, that's how you do it. Yes. What? Oh, sorry. What's the difference between polite and courteous? I know they're kind of like the same. Well, <laughs> are, I think to me, I see courteous as a little bit more of an action, perhaps. But they're very similar. They are synonyms, but so is Who has a Webster dictionary? Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, I guess they are pretty much similar. Um, but, but the main thing is you want, uh, we're not trying to go ahead and, 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 and figure out the differences between these two words. The main objective here is to make sure that you are always respectful for your your the person who you're, you're, you're talking to. And that's the key. You want to go ahead and show that you are here to work with that person. And that's the key. You don't want to go ahead and overcome and have too much overconfidence. You know, I had issues, issues before too. When I have so much confidence that, you know, other people find me to be you know, I'm a threat to them. But that's my fault. I'm sorry. It's my fault because I've been exposed to so many things when I go ahead and talk to someone that they find me to be like, who, who are you? What are you doing here? Right? So you need to go ahead and lower your expectations and, and lower yourself sometimes when, when necessary. It doesn't mean lower or higher. It's just how you go ahead. Who, you got to know who you're dealing with and then be at that level. If I'm always at this level, yeah, I talk to congresswomen, I talk to you know this and that, whatever and so on, then how am I going to go ahead and talk to my IT folks? It makes no sense. There's no correlations. I gotta go ahead and bring myself down, or you might have to go ahead and bring yourself up accordingly. Okay, makes sense. So one thing you'll realize um, that Americans don't necessarily always need to establish a personal relationship to do business. I think in the field that I do, that that's pretty important because I'm going to be in their homes for a long time. I have clients that have been in their homes for 30 years, every week. So I, I, on a very personal. But a lot of other countries, you have to meet with them time and time and time and time and time before a business deal or a contract has come to. That's not necessarily always the case uh, in America. If you're invited to a meeting in the U.S., be prepared to discuss business pretty quickly, like in that initial time. Uh, rather than thinking that you're going to be whining and dining and meeting with them for four or five times before you even talk about business. Uh, if your U.S. counterparts, they, they're going to ask you questions regarding that. They're going to expect you to ask them questions. They're going to want to engage. They want to make an informed decision. And Americans like statistics, so they like numbers and they like to know what, what's in it for me. Okay. But it doesn't normally always take a long time to build a, a relationship. Do you have anything to add to that, Sam? <laughs> this, is, this is so interesting, right? So how Americans think it's all, always about numbers. It's about, hey, where's my aura? What's my status? Where's my schedule? And so on. But in China, it is so different. Come <laughs> you know, like, you know, just keep on drinking and drinking. I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't drink anymore. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. But it's about building that relationship. I'm like, what are we talking about, right? So there's a lot of stuff that in America and in China is, is so different. And the culture that, you know, when we go ahead and do business here in America, it's for, for objective. While over there in China, it's about building relationships. Do I trust you first? If I do trust you, if I think you're an honest person, let's go ahead and go to the next step and so on. If I don't even trust you, that's it, it's game over. But guess what, in America it's about, well, I size you up already, you gave me a good RFP, I think you have a really good you know, credential over here, let's go ahead and start talking business. And that's what we want to go ahead and do. But on the other hand, you know, in, in, in China, you don't do that. So if you want to go ahead and be in America, you just have to go ahead and start doing a lot more numbers and be more objective. And you could go ahead and use some of that, um, uh, how, how would you even say that? The, the, the cultural, you know, ways of how you do business in, in China. You can go ahead and incorporate some of that into America. 
it's a it's a good trick. It's actually um, it, 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 you can build that relationship a lot faster if you want to, if you can do that. I do that all the time. I kid you not. I got the numbers, but I'm still not able to go ahead and work with that person. Guess what I do? Hey, you should sit back. <laughs> you think I'm joking? I do it. I even do it remotely. I, I, I was about to go ahead and take down a data center in, in Maryland, and then the guys would not comply. Guess what? I whipped out my credit card. I said, go to that best restaurant. I want you to go and have a fine dining, and just put everything onto that credit cards. Guess what? Next day, they start working. <laughs> but you know what? That's the thing that I would do. Is that ethical or unethical? That's another subject. <laughs> the problem is that I got my objective done, and I'm able to go ahead and think out the box. Uh, Deb, I'm not only the introducer, also the timer, because the mayor has to leave. Um, maybe we should save the questions until uh, he has to leave. Just before he leaves, we'll give you a chance to ask more questions. Of the okay. Mayor. So. When you go into a business meeting, and this is why we want to leave Sam enough time to talk about this in our question and answer, because Sam has a lot more experience in not only board meetings, council meetings, dealing with a lot of people and influence, but a lot of you had questions regarding that. So I'm going to go through the things that you definitely want to do. Meetings are generally a little more informal in America, but they're still serious. So don't take in being informal as that you don't need to bring your A game because it's still very important. Even with me, with my clients that I've had for 30 years, I never forget that they're my customer. They're not my friend. They are my friend sometimes, but I, I always honor that they are. So number one, turn your cell phone off. But if you are in a situation where you're gonna have an important call, let the people that you're with know that. You know, if your wife's gonna go into labor or you have <laughs> something important, let them know that. Oh, it's it's critical. Yeah. <laughs> vibrate and then let them know I mean uh, and I'll give you an example I was at a conference and I was finding out whether I was pregnant and I knew the speaker knew me and I knew she would be worried if she saw me get up and leave and not have communicated to her before the conference by the way I find out today from my doctor whether I'm pregnant or not and this is back in the day of beepers and I did leave and she came back in and I gave her the thumbs up and it was it been a big celebratory moment for us <laughs> and, um, and then speaking only when you have the floor you know when you when it's you're in a board meeting don't keep interrupting and slow the meeting down wait until it's your turn normally they give everybody an opportunity it, it, to you say know something. that's another thing okay, that a lot of people don't understand and sometimes a lot of people do just go ahead and start talking over you and guess what when you start communicating in all these different ways you're not talking you're not communicating or, or, or the speaker is not able to go ahead and convey his or her information, right? So that's very, very rude. And that's, it's, it's very, very important to go ahead and make sure that you have a facilitator. You've got to have a facilitator if, if that person, if everyone started talking over here, well, guess what? I need someone to go ahead and neutralize it. The, the key word is neutralize. You're not trying to offend that person, but say, hey, you know what? Guess what? Focus back over here. And that's a, that's a, a key thing that we need to go ahead and do. In, in a, in a, you know, in a, in, a, in, a, in a conference or, or whatever it is, you need to have that skill. If you're, if you're not the facil facilitator, you need to go ahead and uh, assign someone to go ahead and be your facilitator. Like what Judy's doing for us. She's yes. keeping an eye on the time so that we can get um, Sam um, to his next meeting on time, but also that you get all the material that you need. So we've asked um, Judy to, to take that position as facilitator because we get up here and get excited and we aren't really looking at the clock. And that's Judy's job. So another thing is to ask questions during the designated question time. Don't always just be interrupting because it really stops the flow of the meeting and you can slow down the agenda and not to interrupt when someone else is speaking. I mean, that's just common courtesy, but we all get excited when we're in meetings and we tend to either talk over someone or break that, the flow of that meeting. My mother does that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and, and listen attentively. I mean, I'm going to tell you, uh, board meetings, are, I don't know how you do it. I mean, I, I, to be in meetings all the time, it's really hard because you have to be a very attentive listener. Yes. And, and that, that's exhausting. It's yes. very tiring. And take notes, but do what you can to keep yourself engaged. And show your body language that you're engaged. You know, don't be looking down at the football game on your phone or your knee. People do. Or, or checking your Facebook. People and I have do. to admit, I've done it. <laughs> so I, when I was reading this, I thought, oh, I got I to I bring my A game. That is so right. You have to be a good listener. You have to listen to everything. 
like for me, I mean, I listen to everything, right? It could be, gosh, I mean, a, a whole array of whatever things, but I still have to listen. Because if I don't listen, guess what? I'm not able to go ahead and make the best judgment for the board or the best judgment for the city and so on. If I don't know, I'm going to ask questions and I have to listen. If I'm not listening, guess what? I'm not doing my job. I'm sorry. I shouldn't be on that level. I should be doing something else. You're absolutely right. You have to be a good listener. And if you don't understand something, wait until the time's appropriate. Make sure you take a note and yes. then ask them a pointed question that will help clarify what you don't understand. And most anybody that's running a board meeting will appreciate that. They'd rather you ask a pointed question so that there's clarity rather than you going on, especially if a decision's going to be made. So this is a fairly long section in regard to no, it's sorry. Um, so these are your for you, oh. Mr. King. I put it here because I wasn't sure how you wanted me to address you. So we're going to take. Let's take about five to seven minutes, Judy, because this is a big bulk of a lot of questions you had. And we wanted Sam to kind of talk about, let's talk about when you're in a group. So let's say a board meeting. How do you handle when someone's on a board if someone has an oppositional view? You've never had that on a city council. Never. <laughs> so never. what would be the, uh, the, the courteous, polite way to say that possibly you have an oppositional view from the person running the meeting, but you still want to show respect. You never ever say, I disagree. <laughs> never. Okay? You never ever say that. You have to be fervent and eloquent. When you go ahead and convey your objective, you can go ahead and go case by case and say, why I think that this would be better, and how we can go ahead and make it better, perhaps, it's always never ever absolute. You want to be fair for an eloquent. It's about speaking, how you articulate it. If you go ahead and say, I disagree strongly, guess what? You're on all out war with that person. You'll never ever get anything done. Okay? A lot of the stuff is you can go ahead and say your you, you be objective and say what you want to go ahead and say about your side, right? And try to go ahead and make sure that the other people are able to go ahead and get your buy-in. And when you do that, you might want to go ahead and do that before the meeting, too. And that's what we call lobbying, right? You want to go ahead and lobby with other people to go ahead and say, hey, I really want to go ahead and be the next you know, person on this whatever so on board. Which, what, can I go ahead and get your endorsement and so on? Um, these are the stuff you want to go ahead and do before. Most of the time when you get into the boardroom, you should be prepared and get your homework already that you should much know what, is going to, what the outcome is. If you really do know that now the outcome is going to be negative, never ever go against that person. Never, you will never get anything done. You want to go ahead and say your your, your piece, okay? How your side is better. Then you got to go ahead and start putting your analysis hat, hat on. Why this is better? Why this is better? You know, how, where's the ROI? How is this going to make the time scope requirements right? These stuff. You want to go ahead and talk about all that stuff. Be objective. Never ever be personal. If you do that, you're not getting anything done. On your board, you're not going to get anything done. On the city, if you go ahead and start being personal, guess what? You're not making the city grow. Your job is to go ahead and make your city grow. If you go ahead and start saying, I hate this other person that's sitting on my board, guess what? This is personal. You're, you're doing a disservice. You shouldn't do that. Okay? So that's what you want to go ahead and do. Always be a good um, uh, uh, speaker, you know, you got to go ahead and speak eloquently and able to go ahead and get around it. You know, people go ahead and give me an absolute, a, a, a say, uh, um, sometimes they'll say, oh, I, I, I disagree with you strongly, or whatever, and stuff like that. You can say, yeah, you can go and disagree all you want, right? This is America. So, it, 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 you know, you, you can say whatever you want to go ahead and say, but this is what I think why this is better, and then just move on. So I have a question for you. Yes. Being that you are a man of influence, and you said that people, I'm, I'm, no, I'm just, but people are going to try and come to him to do things in the city. They do. Am I correct? Yes. On a board, so, different things, people do. Yes. Try how are them. you able to read when someone is giving you support and complimenting you, or when you feel someone's flattering you and trying to manipulate you? Can you tell? Yes. How? 
<laughs> yes. no, this is important because if you want to be sincere, then you're wanting to be a positive influence. Someone that's manipulating or flattering has an ulterior motive, and it's not for the better of the city. It's all credibility. And, and Sam has to read somebody like that. I read so people. I have to read people, right? I have to so read. So what would be things that you could help them say would be a sincere compliment? Body versus, gestures. Okay. Body gestures. If, if, if it is over a phone, then I can't really tell, right? That I need to go. I, I can't really make a determination who this person is. You know, some people, or maybe if it is a group, you know, that I that was endorsing by me, or, or I endorsed that group, then of course I need to go ahead and, and, and do my due diligence a little bit more. And if I go ahead and be with them, then I go ahead and be with them. That's a group situation. Now, if there's a personal person who, who come, you know, a person that's coming in talking to me, it's way better because I'm able to go ahead and see that person because I'm, I'm an expert at reading gestures. I can read people. So if I'm able to go ahead and read this person, you don't need to go and say one thing. I already know if I want to go ahead and work with you or not. There's a lot of gestures to it, you know, just just the, the, the way you talk and the tone, the tonations of it, the gesture of it. You got to say, okay, yes. Am I really saying yes, right? Sure. Am I really saying yes, right? There, there's a lot of stuff you got to go ahead and read to it and see if I want to go ahead and work with that person or not. The good thing about, you know, not a good thing, but it just so happened I, I'm, I'm in a situation that I don't have anyone else to go ahead and report back to, right? I am the ultimate, well, decision maker sometimes. But of course, my constituents I need to go ahead and report back to. My, my key point is, am I making the best decisions for my company, for my city, for my constituents, and so on? And that's the key that I need to go ahead and think of. And, um, you know, again, it really depends on, you got to look at that person. If that person is really being sincere or not. If that person is not being sincere, then you go ahead and work with that person in a very, very, uh, uh, you just got to be, uh, you just got to be, be careful a little bit more. Even if that person is sincere to you, you never know. You never know. And so you got to speak louder than words. And, and a lot of it, you know, you got to do your due diligence too. You know, if I've been told that, oh, all these other people are saying this guy is bad or whatever and stuff like that, you know what, guess what, I'm going to go ahead and put my guards up. So again, it goes back to you, yourself, is a brand. If you go ahead and do something that's bad, guess what, it's not going to go ahead and happen again. I, I, it's going to come back to you. you. It's harder for you to go ahead and do the next thing and so on because it's always gonna go ahead and come back to you, especially nowadays with all the social medias and all this stuff, you know, where we're, we're taping everything. It, it, it's, it's something that you've gotta do. You have to have integrity. So I've got one last question for you. How do you work with your other coworkers, and let's say you're doing your part to get the project done, but let's perhaps say your other coworkers are not, how do you in a cordial, polite way ask them to come up to the table and give you more output in progress. How do you do that? I need you to. You have to have to deal with that all the time. So, so how I, do you handle that? I, I'm an, I'm not like a, you know. Hey, I don't like you. I'm gonna go ahead and tick you out. I need to go ahead and do my analysis because my trait is actually I'm an engineer, right? I I, I did I, I did chemistry. So for me, I'm very very analytical. Biochemistry, it's it's uh, chemistry is very very analytical. I try to go ahead and understand who that person is. So for example, if you're outputting 100%, you're outputting 100%, and somehow this person is outputting 50%, then I need to go ahead and understand why this person is outputting 50%. Maybe that person's having some personal issues in life. Who knows? How could, how dare I to go ahead and say, you're not outputting for this company, you're out of here. You gotta be a little bit more considerate for other people. You want to understand who this person is, right? And try to understand, oh wow, this person's mother just died, or the dog just died, or whatever. But you know, you gotta be compassionate about, give that person enough time to go ahead and ramp it back up to 100%. But if that person continuously, again, it goes back to your integrity and, and, your, and, and, and who you really are, if you continue you know, continuously to go and say, Today I got the measles, tomorrow I got SARS, next day I got MERS, <laughs> and whatever and stuff like that. Guess what? You know what? Maybe then it's the time to go ahead and see if it is time for you to go ahead and do some special projects. So you're saying come to the person with compassion first to see you if have there's a, to. Le a, a, a you have legitimate to. reason why maybe they're falling behind on their work. Yes. Then give them opportunity to understand that. But yes. if there's excuse after excuse after excuse, 
then you're starting to see actions because are speaking louder than words. That becomes your bad apple within that one crane. Okay? Then how do you go ahead and remediate that? You gotta start thinking about that, right? And after you remediate that, who is gonna go ahead and be the backup? And and and, and so on. Because you gotta have that, you know, you gotta continue on like a city, like 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 a company. Whatever it is, let's say if I'm not the CEO, if I'm not on the board anymore, guess what? Someone needs to go ahead and take over my job. Guess what? A lot of people are scared to go ahead and mold someone to be able to go ahead and take over you. Because they are scared to go ahead and say, well, that's not my job security. But you have to go ahead and do that. If, you're, if you care about the city, if you care about the corporations, that is your job to go ahead and do so. But majority of people, I guarantee you, they only care about themselves. That, that's a very, very unfortunate. Uh, Deb, yes. with your permission, it's almost uh, 10 till. Could we see if there's any other questions for the mayor and then we can release him? And then well, we I'd like to him. just finish quickly the other things okay. and then I'm going to give him the floor till he has to leave. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's okay. So business dining, okay, going out with your boss. You never do that, right? You never dine with people. <laughs> it's, it's really not a long lingering event in America. We just want to eat. And we normally eat way too fast. <laughs> um, it's more meant to socialize and have the meal than it is to always do business. But you never want to begin eating until someone, everybody has started eating and everybody has their food. If not, you find who the host is, and if, if they say go ahead and eat, then you do. But you always look to who's ever called uh, the lunch. Who is ever in person that's invited you to lunch and has could have the most benefit from the meeting at lunch pays. <laughs> <laughs> always offer food and drinks to other people. I, I always try and serve those around me. I will always get up and if I get a glass of water, I'll always ask Judy if she wants one. That's just common courtesy and it's just letting people know that you care about them. Excuse me, Sam. She's absolutely right. Your job is to go ahead and reflect who you want to be perceived. Who you want to be perceived, okay? And that's the key. If I want to go ahead and be, you know, I always, I always serve people, but that's what I am. That's who I, I think I am, right? So, so people think that, hey, you know, you can always talk to me, and that's what I want. I want people to always talk to me. You want to be approachable. Some mayors, <laughs> <laughs> right? Right? I mean, there, there are people like that. So. It really depends. I don't even know how they become mayors, right? Because you got to be voted. So you just, you just got to be. So I want to be personable because that's who I am. I'm, I'm here, open. I'm, I'm willing to go ahead and, and, and help people. You know, that's what my job is. You can get seconds in America. We like people to eat. <laughs> <laughs> I love to cook, and it's the it's the greatest honor and, and a really a great compliment for me if the people that I've cooked for like the food that I make. And I am, am a good cook, so that's normally not a problem. When you're invited to an event, you get, receive an invitation. It's really important to respond yes or no. Yes. Don't ignore it, because you may not be invited again. <laughs> and it is okay to say no. It is okay to say no, but it's not okay not to respond. They'll be offended, though, if you say you'll come and then you don't go, mm -hmm. which is why Sam needs to leave on the top. Because if you say you're going to be there, and then you want to honor that, okay? If the invitation says 6 to 8, you can come a little bit later. You can show up at 6.15 if it's a social event, but don't stay till 9 o'clock. Because the person's expecting it to end. Or, and, or, or this is what my... my I shouldn't say this, but my family would do. Come at 7:30. Okay. Ah, 很多都是这样哈，不可以的，这个是不可以的，这是违法。I'm saying you, you just can't do that. And that's I'm I love to do parties. That would so stress me out. That that would really stress me out, especially if you're having a dinner party or something. That's very stressful. So do try and be timely. But knowing that if someone's having a dinner party, I'm not going to make dinner at six o'clock. I'm going to have everybody eat at 6.30. But by 7.30, I'm sweating bullets. <laughs> right? <laughs> and Americans do tend to eat more quickly than other countries. <laughs> we love our food. <laughs> okay, we're not going to do this for now. We might do this after Sam leaves. But how to show respect. 
you can tell Sam's, Sam's a big one on this, and I think he can tell, you can tell if someone's being disrespectful, right? They got their phone going, they're not looking at you. Let me not. tell you one more thing, okay? This is another art. It's about handshake also. Who wants to go ahead and come up here? Yeah, who wants to be? There you come go. Here. Come on up. Okay, there are people out there who would disrespect you in a very, very eloquent way that you can't even tell, okay? You know, they would just push you away. Or, or this is, other politicians would do that to me, and I, I noticed too. <laughs> you think I'm joking? It, it happens, but these are the subtle gestures that you need to go ahead and capture and see who this person is. Is this person with you or against you? I want to work with you. Right? If that person is, is doing that to you, then you got to go ahead and respond and say, do I want to go ahead and neutralize that person? Meaning, do I want to go ahead and say, that person will not be my threat anymore? Or do I want to go ahead and work with that person? If that person does that to me, right, then I'll say, okay, uh, yeah, right? That, then you want to continue on to go ahead and be happy. Just, just, just over time, then you can go ahead and build that relationship. There's a lot of stuff that you need to go ahead and learn. 70% is body language. You need to understand that. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So, some of the most important words you can say are thank you, please, and you're welcome. I think across cultures, you just can never go wrong just being polite and just showing, looking at someone and, and smiling at them. There's a saying that I always love. It says, smile because it increases your face value. Right? It takes less muscles to smile than it does to frown. Avoid gossip. Okay? You don't want to, when I go in and I'm doing a proposal with another plant company that is not doing their job, I don't put that company down. I just tell them what my company can do for them. But I don't ever put another person down. Again, you may not know. I, I just recently had to do a very large proposal and the person that owned the plant company had cancer. Well, I'm a cancer survivor, so I just said, let me know if they can increase what the service that you want, and if not, then I can help you, but I think you ought to give them a chance to rectify it because they're going through a difficult time right now. So don't gossip. It, it makes you look bad. Yep. Okay? Recognizing the contributions that are made by your colleagues. Mm -hmm. Build other people up. Who isn't going to love somebody that makes them feel good? Mm -hmm. But don't flatter. Be sincere. Say something you really mean. Don't say something that you want them to like. Say something you really need. Sorry, Beth. You want to build a good team? This is what you do. You put others before you. You put others before you. I don't care what you did. You think you did, right? But it's your teaming that comes first. And that's how you go ahead and build your team, and that's how you're going to go ahead and start growing. That's how you can go ahead and influence others to go ahead and make sure that you become the next VP or director or so on. If you go ahead and say, I'm going to take all the credit, I don't like this person, whatever, you know, this person is so negative, guess what? You guys are going to go ahead and start battling. And that's the time that you do not want to waste. Again, you only got 24 hours. It doesn't matter. Just go ahead and neutralize that person, continue on, and build this team. Make sure this team will go ahead and help you out. Because now that person, that team perceives you as the leader now. And that's the key. Exactly. Don't interrupt conversations or phone calls. Honor people's space when they're on calls. And show that you put your clients and your co-workers co before yourself, which is exactly what Sam was saying. And, and, and elevate other people. I, I really like to be known as a team player, and I really like people to know that I'll come along. My, one of my main sayings is, how can I come alongside you? What is it that I can do to help you right now? And, and, and people will appreciate that. You have to be careful you're not used up, but you know you have to, to, to show people that you care. Uh, keep your work area clean. That doesn't mean you can't be a little on the messy side, but honor that if your mess is gonna invade and make the other work area messy. Do you have a thing about that? Or no, is that, I think oh, okay. we're time. Okay. And then be considerate in your voice. I have to be very careful of that. I have a loud voice that projects. And I've had to learn, you know, in, in a group setting, to lower my voice and I have to make a conscious decision because sometimes that can be really offensive to other people if my voice volume is too loud. 
and then just be aware of other space, not only in your workspace, but be aware of your personal space. You don't want to get too close to someone because it makes them uncomfortable. You want to stand at a, a, at a distance where they know you're wanting to engage with them, but not so close that they feel like, wow, that, that's right. feeling uncomfortable. And I think we all have that. You know, you'll automatically start stepping away. So with Sam, that's the majority of what we're going to share is we have salutations, we have time, we have attentiveness, and we have respect. So with Sam having to leave, we've got another 10 minutes that you can have the floor that any questions that you would have, fire them off and Sam. I'm going to be here I'll until after. So. Any questions, I can sing and dance with extra money. <laughs> <laughs> Sam, could you reserve for two minutes? Yes. We'll take a group picture. Sure, sure, okay. sure. Okay. So you will have yes, a question. Sir. My boss always told me, if somebody takes you out for lunch or something, you should take the guys out for lunch for next time. Sure. Sure. But normally, whoever initiates the lunch should pay. Is that? Do you find that to be true? Yeah. Whoever's going to benefit from that meeting at that lunch should be the one to pay. Lady or man? I do. I'm the leader. I'm the leader in my community. So even though I'm a woman, I'm the one that normally always ends up paying. My rule with my son, though, is if you're on your phone, you pay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yes. Uh, I wonder how you um, exit a conversation. Like exit. We, yeah, like close up a conversation, like respectfully and gracefully. Good question. Yeah, like a, a social event. Sometimes, sometimes, like the other party, they get really excited and. <laughs> well. You know, have a great day. <laughs> it's been really nice chatting with you, Sam. That's but, right. You know, I've got another person that I need to just go connect with. But it's been a really a pleasure. To I'll talk call with you. you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Don't call me. I'll call you. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, no. But no, you just gotta do it. You know, in a genuine way. I mean, if you want, if you have all these people, then you're gonna go ahead and just move on. It, it, it's another art that you need to go ahead and and you know be, be good at. And also be aware of people giving you clues that possibly you're talking too much and they need to go. A lot of people do do that. <laughs> <laughs> like, come on, you know? So, get to the cute, right? So, you gotta be situation and awareness. I can, I, I'm sure it with Deb, and I, look, this is the first time I've ever met her. Seriously. So, look, Talk to we're, we're, we're good partners. But a lot of the people, when you're sharp, you can look at their eyes. You know exactly what to do next, right? This is the, 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 the partner that you want to go ahead and work with. If you can go ahead and see, hey man, I gotta go, and that person's not, it's not being receptive, I don't know if that person is, that, is the person you wanna go ahead and work with. So, yeah. Questions? Yes, yeah, sir. Uh, yeah, for, for us, uh, uh, my company uh, allows like $10. Which company do you work for? Raytheon. Okay. Yeah, uh, we, we allow like $10 uh, gift. A donation accepted, any more than 10, uh, we gotta you know, uh, be careful about it. Is there any rules in, in, yes. uh, in the yes. real yes. world out there? Yes, you know, what yes, the rule? yes, yes. We, we, we cannot go ahead and accept uh, anything over 50 or something like that. And if we do, we need to go ahead and put it onto a, a 700 form. Oh. We have another group that's called. Uh, See. Yeah, it's at the, at PPC. Uh, they're the one who who uh, you know look at us and see who you know who is lobbying whatever who's going to give, give gifts. For me, that's why I I never put anything on the form. Not because I'm unethical, it's because I always give them all away. I don't need them. I, I seriously don't. Right? The money I get from the city, I give. Them, I donate back to the city, anyways. I donate. I want to donate. That's my job. I want people to understand that I'm not here to go ahead and take advantage of other people. I'm here to go in and work for you. That's why I do. But it's a good point. You need to be aware um, of what the gift giving would be for certain people because it could either be something that would be allowed or it can also be considered manipulative or something that you're trying to get someone's favor. So you need to be very sensitive in how you do that. And, and sometimes, even if the lobbyists want to go ahead and eat with me, I'll pay. I don't care. I'll pay. Because I don't want. I don't want his influence. If I don't like that person, I don't want that person's influence. I'll pay for it. That's what I'll do. Yes? Back to that introduction, sometimes when you introduce one person to another, and it get to be like embarrassing if all of a sudden your mind kind of went blank and you forgot the person's come here, come name. Here, come here, come here. <laughs> <laughs> that has happened to me. Right. It has happened to me. Yeah.
Hi, Dong Mei. Hi, how are you? Nice to meet yeah, you. Yeah, nice to meet you. Hi, <laughs> you, you know who, what, what my title is, right? Hi, Mr. Mayor. Whatever, you know. Hey, hey, dude. <laughs> This is so and so, and then I'll wait for her to go ahead and cue you. Oh, this, my name is. What about yes. what if you forgot my name? <laughs> <laughs> you shouldn't be doing it. <laughs> <laughs> just happened, you know. Then you shouldn't be doing it. You're, you're not even ready. Then you should say, okay, it's all about you, situation awareness. Are you ready to go ahead and execute? If you're not ready to execute, don't execute. Then you, this is what you do. You go ahead and find, hey, hey, hey what's that person's name? You get that person's name, get the business card, and now you go ahead and execute. You do. You ask right? someone. If it happens, just be gracious. You know, laugh. You know, laugh yeah. at yourself. And if oh, I forgot your name anyways. <laughs> someone and I did this with Cynthia today that I meet someone for the first time and we were meeting to find out what we were doing here but I don't really know why is she here who, who, how, how does she belong in this meeting and I'll always say so how do you know Dan Kai and that's a lead-in that she said oh well I'm good friends with his daughter and so I'm going to do registration she just went right with it see so but that allowed us to get to know each other when I didn't have any idea why she was even there. You know, initially, she was at Starbucks saving us a, a seat, which we were thrilled about. But that's a great leading question. So how do you know so-and-so? Because if you're both at a party you've been invited, both of you should know who the host is, right? But if they don't, maybe it's... That's, that's actually good. How do you know? No. Because I'm not trying to understand the relationship. I'm trying to do due diligence now. Got it. It's a great, right? Good. good. Thing. I like that. So we need to get together for a group Thank picture. You. Damn yeah. guy. Yeah. Show us how you want us to do that. Okay. okay. This is a very challenging. How do you do? Nobody move. Nobody move. Nobody move. And uh, we have photography or camera to do it. Yeah. Okay. 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 前面的椅子搬上来，两边再搬两个椅子，然后第二排呢，我尽量往close-in，仍然坐，第三排站起来，第四排站起来，其他的人往往往那个什么中间呃中间那个站起来，然后这样就可以。And honored, they'll remember you. So that's going to cover up a lot of mistakes or anything you don't know. Look them in the eye, smile. Tell them that you're grateful they're here. Ask them something about themselves. Set yourself up to, in your situation you're in, think of a couple of small talk questions before you go and kind of have them in your belt when you know that you need to talk to someone. And then just practice. But I want to leave you with that. That has helped me so much to know that I might be with someone that's way out of my league, but if I can make them remember me and feel good in my presence, they'll ask me that. So thank you very much for your time today. I'm going to turn it back over to Dan Pai. So I think we are getting close to the end here. But smiling at the end, I think we have another two more very important uh, programs. The very first one I want to introduce, I did already, it will be Harry Lee. Just a second back. Harry, come up here. Harry Lee. <laughs> Harry Lee of the world, you know, you don't know the company. That company has 67,000 people, a small company. And uh, some, some, said 126. <laughs> some billion dollars in sales, and then he was a big and uh, last year I was honored to meet him. The day he was retired from February 28th, 2014. So and I invited him to CSAC convention and uh, gave a talk in the morning. He's talk about the museum. That's how we started. He only drew about 195 people besides him. So that's not easy. You think about it, get your teenager get up in the morning. Think about it again. I will get a lot of students. So I want that, uh, I think, uh, uh, Harry, you would share some of the experience you had. Sure. And you could tell us a little bit about cracking the is it's possible, right? <laughs> okay. I think so. <laughs> All right. Okay, thank, thank you very you. much. I'm going to give you the speech. Okay, okay. 
So we'll have about, uh, I guess it's about 10, 15 minutes. Okay. Well, I'm here for 12. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> actually, when Dan Kai asked uh, if I was available to come talk, I actually had plans. Uh, but since I didn't win the Powerball, we kind of <laughs> I thought, well, I can make it here. So I'm not going to do that. But first of all, I wanted to just say what a great job Dan and Sam have done. Um, and especially with CSAC and Dan Kai and putting this program together, because had I had something like this early in my career, and I'm a lot older than Dan, by the way. So she said she was 20 in 1980. <laughs> but, but had I had that, it would have helped me much quicker to, to rise in my career. Um, and what's amazing is when I spoke at the National uh, Symposium, and I talked about the bamboo ceiling and about how you treat people, I used the same quote from my aunt. And that's been one of my most favorable quotes that I adhere to, because people do remember how you made a film. They won't, they'll, they'll forget all the details, but if you treated them bad, they're, they're going to remember you treated them bad. They can't remember why, but, <laughs> but, but, they remember you treated that bad. but if you didn't, you know, if you treated them well, if you were warm and open, they're going to remember that. That's that first impression. By the way, you only get to make a first impression once, okay? But you do it a thousand times. Over your lifetime, tens of thousands of times, new people you meet, it's a situation. Your first impression is not only, not only when you go meet someone, but it's how they see you in a meeting, how they see you in, in any type of environment where you're not even talking to them. Just how they gather who you are. Okay, so it's really important. So some of the points they made today are very important, and I hope they stick with you and use them. So let me tell you a little bit about myself quickly, uh, so you know where I'm coming from. Uh, I worked in the aerospace defense industry for 35 years. Uh, the last 28 worked with Northrop Grumman, so it's a major aerospace defense firm, and they do uh, now about $25, $30 billion of business a year. Uh, during that time, I rose to the ranks to become a manager, a director, a uh, vice president, and then a corporate vice president uh, right before I retired. So during my career as a manager, I managed anywhere from three people to 11,000. So depending on what level I was at and where I was at. And so the thing that hit me, though, is as I rose through the ranks and I got to a higher level, there were very few agents that succeeded to the higher levels. And you start to ask yourself, why? Especially in our industry where it was very technical and the, the percentages of officers did not reflect the percentage of the Asian community in the workforce. And there were a lot of smart people community. So why weren't they succeeding to the highest levels? Um, if you're old enough, you might remember what's called the glass ceiling. And that was really for women, why they couldn't break through that glass ceiling and what was holding them down. Well, for Asians, what do we talk about? So I'm not going to take credit for the term, coining the term bamboo ceiling, but it fits, okay, because we can resonate with bamboo. So, you know, was there a bamboo ceiling that was preventing Asians from getting up to the highest level. You know, and, and if there was, how did they get past that? And so one of the first things that happened when I was a manager, I got to go to a program called LEAP, Leadership Education for Asian Professionals. Anybody ever hear of that? So this is going back now to the late 80s. And I was the youngest manager along with about 40 uh, managers and directors, all Asians, learning about leadership and wondering why they hadn't succeeded an officer wanted. And what was interesting was that every time they asked him, well, why don't you think you succeeded? They internalized. Now, it was because I didn't work hard enough. Or I wasn't smart enough. And I didn't have the right degree. And so, so I, I listened to all these managers and directors going around saying, well, what did you do? Most of them, I went and got a second degree. I got my master's, I got my PhD. Okay, did that help you get to the next level? The answer was no. And what they didn't start to realize is, you know, once you get past a certain level, you know, your technical skills aren't the most important. Because when have you ever seen a CEO sit down at a drafting table? <laughs> you don't, because that's not their job anymore. They're beyond that. 
that's what their workforce does. And so it was this, this thought about, well, what are we doing or not doing then right that's not getting up to the right levels? And so it was apparent to me, now, I'm a fourth generation Californian. So, so my great grandfather came over in 1863 and settled up north. A lot of people don't think I still have the Asian culture, but believe me, when we did the symposium, I showed I did. Um, and so a lot of the traits I still have, and I started to realize going through this, that, well, what are the things that I'm doing that are holding me back from not doing? And I started to realize, for some of it, it's the cultural traits we have. Okay, looking people in the eye when you're talking to them. I'm not wanting to do that because that's challenging. Not challenging authority. You know, respect your elders. Don't stand out in the crowd. I was, I was told, you know, the tallest blade of grass gets cut. <laughs> <laughs> or, or, a lot of stuff gets shot. You know, grandfather used to tell me that. Why? Because we were instilled, you know, don't stand out, you know, go with it, don't bring shame on the family. So those are things, you know, that were embedded in the growing up that a lot of us have that I didn't realize impacted the way I was perceived at work. Perceived. Okay? The fact that, well, you know, he's quiet. He's not speaking out. You know, I don't know if he's got leadership skills. He's not raising his hand. He doesn't come to the front, you know, of the room to sit when no one else does. You know, he's sitting in the back. You know, he's kind of gathering. When, when we have breaks, who do you congregate with? Do you go meet new people? Great, great session today on, on introducing yourself. Do you do that, or do you go back and talk to people that, you know, your friends, right? You're not expanding your network. So, I went through all this, and over the years, I started looking and looking at you know, other things that we could do differently in terms of breaking the bamboo ceiling. Well, what I'm going to tell you is, if I can do it, you can do it. Okay? There's no reason. I started out as a USDA resident inspector. So I actually inspected raisins for, for my profession. And I did that for a couple of years and decided that's not what I wanted to do when I got a business degree. I went to California State University. Not high pedigree, but still, it was a good education. Now, I came out and started working. And what I found is, you know, it wasn't my pedigree. It wasn't that piece of paper that I hung on the wall. It was, you know, the work you did. And it was great. When I was first starting my career, I was the hardest worker. That was great. But there gets to a point where you become a manager in the higher levels where being the hardest worker works against you. You have to be, okay, someone who can facilitate motivate people. And if you're the hardest worker as a manager, something's wrong. Okay, but it's learning, you know, those skills as you go up the levels to go. So so having the traits, first of all, that 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 we have, you know, you don't want to give them up. So how do you feel good about enhancing it? Like challenging and <laughs> challenging your boss. You know, so things I learned was just like today, you have to be eloquent when you do it. You can't tell your boss, well, that's stupid. <laughs> I'm not going to do it that way. I mean, Sam was great. Well, have you thought about doing it this way? Are there ramifications if, if you take that approach? There's ways that you can bring your point out where you disagree, where you don't have to say, you know, I won't do it. I disagree. You know, those are the things you have to learn, the skills that you have to own, okay, in this environment. Because, you know, there are politics involved, whether you like it or not. Whether it's a large company like Northrop Grumman or a small company that's family owned, there's always politics. And politics aren't bad, okay? You know, but you have to understand who's, who's in the power, who's not. And normally, you know, it's not the leader that's the power base. It's the people who have the ear of the leader. It's his confidants or her confidants, okay? And so, so, but being able to recognize it. So I think it's great that CSAC has taken the time to look at, is there a bamboo ceiling? Uh, when I do my, my talks, I always ask the audience, do you believe there's a bamboo ceiling? And I don't tell them I do or I don't until the end. Okay? And my perception is there is a bamboo ceiling, but it's self-imposed. It's on each of us. I haven't found it in corporations. I haven't found it in the major corporation. What I find is, you know, the lacking of skills and knowledge and experience to break out. 
okay, if you recognize, so you can get to that next level. Because in order to do that, you have to stand out. You can't be part of the group. You have to be different. You have to add value. And sometimes that means taking a risk, stepping out, okay, getting out of your comfort zone to go do it. And, you know, when you do things like that, you know, it's scary. There's no question about it. But I, I promise you, the more you do it, the easier it gets. And the more it becomes habit. And that's what you really want. These are habits that you develop. Okay, and as you develop it, it becomes natural. And it becomes genuine. Because like we heard earlier, if it's not genuine, people are going to know. They can tell. You don't have to have it written on your forehead, but, but they're going to know. And so, you know, you have to learn the skills. You have to become self-aware of some of the things that, I'm not saying that you're doing, but that you may not do, okay, that are preventing people from recognizing your potential. <coughs> Where could you be? What are you seen as? Because everyone's perception is something different. They're not seeing you the way you see yourself. And if any of you have ever had what we call a 360 review, where you send out a survey to those, your peers, your boss, and others, and you get the feedback, it's amazing. It's amazing how other people see you and how they recognize what are your strengths, what are your weaknesses, no matter how well you think you may disguise them. Okay, so it's becoming that self-aware of you know, and Sam talked about it, reading people when you walk in the room. How are they responding to you? You know, is it positive? Is it not? Are they dismissive? You know, you have to be aware of that all the time, and everyone is different. So you can't look at a group and, and, and blanket the whole group. You have to look at individuals, and you have to be comfortable doing that. And so I, I think you guys have done a great job in terms of uh, putting a program together. I've been very impressed. I mean, Dan Kai gives me the credit, but you know, it, it's been uh, long ago uh, when people were working on this, and there have been a lot of people who talk about it. Uh, I like to do it because I am an example. Like I said, I, I come from a very small town, town of 10,000. Uh, my dad was a small town doctor, but I grew up on 80 acres working on a farm. Uh, and yet I succeeded in a Fortune 500 company to become a corporate vice president of contracts, pricing, and supply chain. That meant negotiating. <coughs> when I say negotiate, you know, I'm talking about negotiating for billions of dollars, not small stuff. And so I was in the back when he asked, who's an introvert? Mm. I raised my hand. And that just proves that you can actually overcome some of those insecurities, some of those traits you think you have that, well, I can't get there because, you know, that to me is an excuse. You know, that to me, you know, you have to get out and try, and, you, and you've got to get comfortable getting uncomfortable. Tough to say. Get comfortable getting uncomfortable. Okay, because the more you do that, you know, the more you're going to stretch yourself. You know, take the tools that you're learning here and go practice. Because it's like piano. You can't just sit down and play a concerto. And if you think you can do that when you need to do that, it's not going to happen. You know, so having workshops like this, getting a chance to go practice, you know, practice in front of the mirror, talking. You know, what's your 30-second speech when you're in the elevator? You know, if you got the chance to be stuck in an elevator, which someone did with me, well, they didn't really get stuck. Is I was going up an elevator, and he wanted to talk to me, so he hit every button in the elevator. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, that's taking a risk, right? <laughs> that's taking a risk. He says, well, look, you know, I, I know you don't know me, but I, won't be, I wanted to get a chance to talk to you. I wanted to get some time. And, you know, and I'm looking, I'm going, we've got 24 floors here. <laughs> you know, but I appreciate it. So I said, I'll tell you what. You get on my calendar and I'll make an hour of time for you. you know, but he had, you know, the guts to try something different to get my attention, okay, to get some time with me to talk about career and career planning. And I thought it was great. I thought it was uh, pretty inventive of him to do it. Uh, <laughs> I got out the elevator so I could get on another one. <laughs> because I'd be late for, for a meeting. Because <laughs> uh, that's implied. So, uh, 
But, but once again, I want to thank Yang Kai for allowing me, first of all, to speak at the National Symposium last year. It was a great honor. And um, uh, out of that, I've actually made a lot of contacts, uh, which I really appreciate. Uh, but the reason why I do this now is because I believe you have to give back. Okay? I have been so fortunate in my career. Um, you know, I, I, I couldn't imagine achieving the levels I achieved uh, and loving it. And I loved what I, what I worked, but I was able to retire early. Um, and so with that, you know, I believe I owe back to the community. And, and I'd love to see, you know, this community, the Asian community, succeed to the highest levels that that are there, fulfill your potentials, okay? And things like this training, things like becoming self-aware, you know, will help get you there, okay? So I encourage you to uh, take the, uh, two more, two more sessions here? Yeah, two more sessions. Two more sessions, uh, you know, it rounds it out. I think they did a great job of, you know, what are some key subjects uh, in terms of developing, and we had talked about it before, we talked about developing the program. And I wish you the best of luck in your careers and as much success and happiness as I've had. So, Happy New Year to all of you, and, and thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is okay with everybody? About five minutes or late, okay? So do you have a time? Uh, can I entertain a couple of questions? Uh, Still didn't win the lottery. <laughs> 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 After that, uh, maybe you can stay a little longer. Sure. Or you have I have a question here. Okay. Okay. Sure. I studied uh, the, the, the resume of the uh, executive committee. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, most of them find out they have less degree in MBA. Mm -hmm. Most of them have MBA. I find mm -hmm. out, you know, it sounds like MBA is very important to be executive. Yeah, other than technical degree, I'm not to have a PhD or a right. master's degree. Is that, is that correct? Yeah, I will tell you, in a very technical field, okay, if you're on the technical side, uh, an MBA really demonstrates that you're looking at a different perspective. Okay, because what I found when I was in that leap was everyone focused on the technical side and not on the business side. And if you're going to run a business, like I said, you won't be putting your pen to paper. You won't be designing. You won't be drafting. What you're going to be doing is making business decisions. Okay, and so from a technical perspective, at those ranks, I would tell you having an MBA is probably key if you want to make that transition into the upper levels. Now, you can be a technical fellow right. and not need your MBA. Mm -hmm. I will tell you, though, why I highly encourage getting education, okay, and, and furthering your education. I don't have an MBA. And once again, I graduated from California State University of Fresno, okay, Caltown, mm -hmm. with a business degree. And so it didn't hold me back. So it's not an excuse, okay, to say, well, I don't have my MBA. I didn't go to an Ivy League school. Um, that's an excuse, okay? It's what you do when you're in the job. And if you take the skills you have and you apply it, you know, it will certainly highlight, okay, yourself. And then you have to let your work speak for itself, too. But if you're on the technical side and you want to get into upper level management, you're going to be moved away. You're going to have to develop your people skills. Your business skills. So I have to know that. That acumen's got to be mm -hmm. risen. Maybe we'll get you some one more question. Short question, short answer. Too long an answer, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I get going, yes. So, how do you get yourself for promoting the, you know, gradually from a man you can three people to, you know, 11? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, first of all, you can't be ready to, to go to the next level unless you have someone ready to take your, your spot. Okay? Most people start to be afraid. Okay, they worry about, well, wait a minute, I don't want someone nipping at my heels and ready to take my spot. That's my job security, so they don't mentor, they don't develop people, right? Well, if you develop people and your senior leadership sees that, you're ready to move on. They don't have to worry about backfilling your spot because you've got two or three people ready to jump in and take over without missing a beat. You can move on to the next spot. Most of the time, the decisions we make are, well, that's an important role. We can't afford to lose that person. Okay, we can't afford to, to let them leave this, this group, this organization, to the next one. So, so having, having someone ready in your spot, and then you have to learn to toot your own horn. Okay? And I'm not talking about just bragging, but you have to learn to take credit where credit's due, not let someone else steal it. You know, and that means 
standing up, speaking up in the meeting. Okay, because a lot of times they don't know if the idea came from you, the thought came from you, you know, the, the solution came from you, or you're a part of it. So being able to stand up and talk about that, getting recognized. You have to stand out. The higher you go, you have to differentiate yourself from your peers. Because guess what? They all want to be the next level two. Who doesn't want to be a manager, director, vice president, CEO? I mean, and the perks that come with it, right? So it's, it's a competition. There's, there's no question about it. It's a competition. And there's a lot of, you know, strong competition. So how do you just distinguish yourself a little bit? It's not about putting someone else down. It's about standing out in your own way. Thank you very much again. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, I'll tell you an opportunity to introduce the two people here. One is uh, the president of the CSEC, White Off. You can see a difference when it's talking to you. He's capable and he's also So, uh, but before, I think you want to introduce our program, right? But before you do that, I'll also introduce uh, Harry. Harry Lee, Mr. Lee, in the back. And he's the one who introduces the bamboo ceiling to us. So if you have a chance, say hello to him. And please, and at the end, he's going to give us a few words at the end here. So thank you very much for coming here.
and uh, about our STEM project, you know, the science and technology is going to be in the mad. And after that, we have a big celebration. Don't go off. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, uh, my name is Yume and so speaking. Thank you. She's <laughs> a uh, president. Uh, speaking of giving back to the community, uh, not only we support for your group, we also support the younger generation by promoting the interest in the science, technology, engineering, math. So for the last few years, I have a program, a, a, a competition program, is an essay. They all have to do an essay. Between 6th to 8th grader, except the 6th to 12th grader, it means that two classes. So if anybody have, have kids or know someone who are in the age range, 6th to 12th grader, anybody? Good. Please come talk to me, okay? I highly encourage you. It's a very good program, okay? The very first year, well, we have got one girl, she, we encourage a patent idea. It's a billion dollar idea. We help them to develop it. So, Please come talk to me after this meeting, okay, about this STEM program. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Now, take only one minute to celebrate it. You can have it here, together with me. We'll have a one person birthday. Okay, oh. see you. Oh. 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 I'm sorry, we were, we were talking tonight. Right? Okay. So, Cynthia's birthday, we'll prepare the cake, and uh, you spend one minute with me and sing a song together. Okay. Are we singing Happy Birthday? Yes. Right. You sing Happy Birthday. I'm singing Happy Birthday to you. Happy Birthday to you. Happy Birthday, dear Cynthia. Happy Birthday to you. Yes, are you a birthday? Oh, no. Yeah, yeah. 